today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study his word. And like always, we're going to be explaining another often confusing question. So I hope you've got a pen, a paper, and your Bible. And let's get started. Are we all related? Black hair, brown hair, no hair, black skin, red skin, tan skin. Human beings can come in exhaustible variety of sizes, shapes and colors and even personalities. But we are all part of a single race which is called the human race. In Genesis chapter 1 and 2, it describes in detail how human beings came into existence. In the beginning there was one man and one woman and God did not create any more humans in the way he had created them. But then he gave this first man and the first woman a command to be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Genesis 1.28 And all other humans came from those first parents. So in that sense, we are all related to each other. Even many evolutionary uh, theories concede that human beings originated from a single set of parents. Dorit, Akashi, Gilbert W. in 1995, they all spoke about the same thing. The, the human Y chromosome. And the theories greatly differ in the ideas of where, the, of where those parents came from, what their nature was. But it's undeniable that all human beings are genetically related. According to Highfield uh, Roger Survey, there's this one thing which says that DNA finds all humans are 99.9% the same. Okay? And the Bible says that those parents were birthed in the heart of a living and powerful God. Genesis 1.26 It tells us it all started from God. And God said, let, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So we understand that humans were designed by him for fellowship and love and they were set as gardeners in his perfect world. Genesis 2.15 And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And verse 19 And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So definitely before the fall, they would have been genetically perfect. And Adam lived for almost a, a thousand years, I think. Let, let's see what the Bible says in Genesis 5.5. 5. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. So we can see that uh, these people were almost very clean, almost very perfect. Of course, sin had entered, but it had not really corrupted their whole entire body. And of course, we can assume Eve lived a similar uh, long time. Theoretically, the two could have had several hundreds of children since their bodies did not age at the rate that humans now age and those children grew up and married each other exponentially multiplying the human race within the first several hundred years of human existence. After several generations, human beings became so wicked that God sent a flood to wipe out every living thing on the earth except one man and his family. This man, his name was Noah. Genesis verse six, chapter 6 from verse 5 to 7 tells us the story of Noah. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth 
and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the law that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and every creeping thing that and the, the falls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But of course God showed grace to Noah because uh, you understand that Noah did what God wanted him to do. Noah was perfect in his generation. That was Noah, his wife, their three sons and their wives. Those are the only ones who were saved through the flood along with enough animals to replenish the earth. You can go and read uh, Genesis 7, 1 to 4. So, not only are we all related to our first parents, Adam and Eve, but you also related to Noah and his wife. God started over with one family and told them to be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. Think about Genesis 9, 1. It says, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish, replenish the earth. As the time went on, each of Noah's sons had more sons and their descendants eventually became various nations. You can read Genesis 10, you, you will get the story. The dispersion of humanity after the Tower of Babel gave rise to the various language groups that we see today. And it's possible that it also contributed to the formation of the various races, regardless of the ethnic and racial differences we observe today. All human beings are genetically related through Adam and Eve. And the fact that we are all related through Adam is spiritually significant. According to the Bible, we are all born with Adam's sinful nature. We have a predisposition to choose our own paths and be our own gods. Think about Romans 7 verse 14. It tells us this. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I will, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do then I do that which I will not. I consent unto the law that is good. Now then is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that is in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing, for to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. But the good which I will do, I, 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 I do not. But the evil I will not that I do. <laughs> it's confusing. But Verse 20 says, Now, if I do that I will not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells with me in me. You see, Adam, Adam's sin is still affecting humanity even now. Verse 21 tells us, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Why? Because we are sinners. We are from the lineage of Adam. Verse 22 tells us, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bring me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who is going to deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Christ our Lord that with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Children do not have to be taught how to sin. It comes naturally because they inherited the same sinful nature that their parents and grandparents inherited. We have that nature. Romans 5.12 Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. For all have sinned. If Adam were not or if Adam was not the father of all humankind, we could not have all inherited his nature. But because we are all Adam's children, 
we are all sinners like he was because one person disobeyed God and many more became sinners. Many more became sinners. Romans 5.19 Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. Who is that person who obeyed? It's Jesus, the man Jesus. Because Adam passed on to us the judgment of sin. He sinned, the sin that he earned. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans 6.23 tells us For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Lord. You see, the wages of living in the nature of Adam and never repenting is death. But the gift of God, the gift of living in the nature of Jesus Christ is eternal life. Understanding that every one of us is born equally and deserving of God's mercy keeps us from passing judgment on others. Romans 2.1 Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whatsoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judges another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou judges does the same thing. Are you trying to judge others and tell them that they are sinners? You're so a sinner as well. But you've been redeemed. If, if that is of course you saved now. And understanding that every person is also a unique individual created in the image of God helps us to treat all people with respect. All people with respect. C.S. Lewis explained it this way. He said, and I quote, They are no ordinary people. You have never talked to a mere mortal. It is immortals whom we joke with, work with, marry, snub, and exploit. This does not mean that we are to be perpetually solemn. We must play. But our marriage must be, must be of, that, of that kind. And it is in fact the marriage thing which exists between people who have from the outest, outset, taken each other seriously. No flippancy or superiority or presumption and our charity must be a real and costly love. Costly love with deep feeling for the sins in spite of which we love. The sinner, no mere tolerance or indulgence which parodies love as flippancy and parodies merriment and of what? Friends, this, this, the funny f- fact here is that we are all related. You're my brother. I'm your brother. You're my sister. I'm your brother. We are all friends. We are all the same. So let's love each other and do what's right. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. I hope it was a blessing to you. I hope you've learned something. You can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite uh, and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new podcast. And if you'd like to support this ministry, please use the details in the description below. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next one.